tax savings, whatever work they choose to use. But in urban centers, there's growing need for services, whether it be transportation, um, public housing was an issue that you was all for brought up. How do you, how would you as a politician or as an individual change that conversation from tax, tax, tax savings to services? Because if you don't fund services, it'll hurt the tax base in the long run. It's not a very complicated conversation to have. You just say that. <laughs> um, but the problem is that we've got a massive structural issue in this country. You know, a few years ago, it was all the vote to talk about the fiscal imbalance between provinces. Well, the real fiscal imbalance in this country is between the orders of government. So the Canadian Federation of Independent Business uh, published a report this week, which is almost completely wrong, which says what I'm about to say is not true. What I'm about to say is true just so you know, which is that because we have such limited means of taxation at the city level, the only thing we have is the property tax, which is a horribly regressive and inefficient way of taxing people. And so at the city level, across Canada, cities collect about eight cents of every tax dollar. Provincial and federal governments collect about 92 cents. The CFIB says, well, cities spend up to 15 cents because we get a few pennies back from the federal and provincial governments. Uh, but that's a totally, who cares? It's a, one of those arguments the smart kid in the third row of the class makes that has no actual bearing in real life. So, <laughs> actually I should say the not that smart kid in the third row makes. But, um, but in any case, the point is that we've got serious challenges. So in Calgary, for example, my annual operating budget is about $3 billion a year. My capital budget can go anywhere from 200 million to three or four billion depending on the largesse of the other orders of government. And I say largesse, but that's the wrong word. Because City of Calgary taxpayers send to the provincial government $4 billion a year more than we get back in all provincial services. My entire operating budget is only three. We send to the federal government $10 billion a year more than we get back in all services. So three and a half times my operating budget. That's a challenge. So when you see me with my hand out asking for money from the federal government, I'm not asking for uh, a handout. I'm asking for a small tax rebate on the taxes that we already pay. And the important reason to remember that is this. People in Ontario are always surprised by what I'm about to say. The oil sands, which drive the Canadian economy, which have kept us from the global recession, are actually not located in downtown Calgary. <laughs> the Calgary Tower is not, in fact, a giant derrick. <laughs> They're far, right? They're a three-hour flight from Calgary, or a four-hour flight from Toronto. You get across Europe in the same distance it takes to get from Calgary to the oil sands. And so the question then becomes, why is it that all of those great head office jobs are in those gleaming towers in downtown Calgary. They could be anywhere. They could be in Toronto. But increasingly, they could be in Shanghai or Dubai, anywhere else that ends in I. Right? People can do those jobs remotely. And the answer for why all those jobs are in those towers is very simple. Because people want to live there. And if you have cities where congestion is so bad, that employers can't rely on their employees to get to work on time because you never know what's going to go wrong. If you have a city where people are spending two or three or three and a half hours in traffic every day or on a crowded train every day and that's time they could be having with their families, soon they're going to make a lifestyle choice to live somewhere else. And if we lose that tax base out of our major cities, then we've lost everything. And so when I ask for those small tax rebates from the other orders of government, what I am trying to do is invest in the tax base so they can continue to do whatever it is they do. By the way, I never know what it is the federal government does. They have all the money, but I can't figure out what they do with them. <laughs> Defense stuff, I think. Um, and so, yeah, we, we're in deficit positions. Um, governments and other orders of government have get other orders of government need to get their fiscal house in order. There's no question that that's true, and they will make decisions based on that. I don't have that kind of choice. I'm not allowed to run a deficit, so 
so I don't. Never have and never will. I have to provide services that keep people happy and healthy and safe and alive every minute of every day. I can't say to you, your water is only drinkable for 18 hours a day. I can't say to you, the fire service only works five days a week. Right? We have to continue to provide these services every single day. Police, fire, transit, roads, clean water, parks, recreation, arts, culture. Those are the things that keep people alive. You know, I, I always jokingly say that if the federal government disappeared while we were talking in here, it would probably be a week or two before anyone noticed. If your provincial government disappeared, well, we're in a university, so you notice pretty quickly. But it might be a couple of hours before anyone noticed. If your city government disappeared while we were in here, well, you'd notice pretty quick because you'd be dead. And so those things are the things that we have to realize are not negotiable. And rather than make those the luxuries when we're trying to get our fiscal books in order, those have in order, those have to be the must-haves. And then the balancing of the budget has to happen after that. All right, maybe one last one.